All right, my beautiful friends. I just pressed the let's go live a button. And so that means who we've got to wait for the stream to fire up all across the fruited plain of the internet. Before we go ahead and get started, we got trial day two to attend to, but let's make sure we connect ourselves. And it looks like things are working well. Over on the YouTubes, over on the Rumble, and on the locals, that's tremendous news. That means we can go ahead and get started. So let's do it, shall we? Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live, the show that spotlights misconduct involving police, prosecutors, and politicians. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney, and today, day two, Trump trial, Alvin Bragg prosecuting. We're going to unpack everything that happened today, still in the middle of jury selection, and we are waiting to see what the panel looks like, and we're going to find out at the conclusion of the show, we do have some jurors who have already been seated. And so we'll see what we can glean out from them. Jury selection is always tough because they're kind of playing musical chairs we saw in the comments talking about jurors moving around and we're having a hard time understanding where they're going because we're not in the courtroom so like juror uh, eight goes to seat two juror 15 goes to seat four we go what the heck now juror 14 goes away and then juror seven goes in place of juror five what the heck's going on so we're going to try to keep tabs on what is cooking there and we're also going to see what some of the latest filings look like and so first segment today we're reviewing a filing that got dropped by Alvin Bragg yesterday. We already heard that they were gonna be moving to hold Trump in contempt, and there was a hearing date scheduled on that, but Alvin Bragg's motion has now come in, his memorandum as to why Trump should be held in contempt, fined several thousand dollars, and then threatened with jail. And the reason for this is because Trump, of course, was responding to Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels, the perjurer and the porn star. So, sounds like a name of a band. So they, are out all over the media running their mouths. Trump has a little bit of a comment on it on True Social, just retweets what Michael Avenatti had to say. Boom, Bragg moves for contempt. We'll read through that and see what is inside. Then we've got Alina Abba, who's in the house, and we're gonna see what she had to say about this. She was on with Fox News this morning, and so we'll have a clip of her. And then Stephen A. Smith was on his show, and he was lacing in to some other people on the other side of this conversation saying, you guys look pathetic. You look like cowards. Why are you doing this? It's because you can't beat him. Okay, we know how this works. Cheaters, bullies, and liars. All right, so I hear from Stephen Smith there in the first segment as we go through the filings. And then, man, look how good Trump looks. Doesn't he look handsome as hell? He looks just confident as can be. Smiling with that hairdo. Woof. Envious, you know. Only certain types of individuals are capable of that look. In the middle of a hack prosecution onslaught, Trump looks good. And so my friends, if anybody's out there feeling a little bit down on the, in the day, down in the dumps because of all this tyrannical nonsense and the wrecking of American justice, don't fret a bit, okay? Donald Trump is standing tall, standing proud, and we're going to get through all of it and be better for it. He is helping to expose what we all need to see. So Trump on day two, before he walked in, he was there saying a couple things before the day got started. As per usual, we're gonna check in with Matthew Russell Lee. Inner City Press is where you can follow him and we've got his links in the description of wherever you're watching this. So you can follow him on X and on Substack, support his work as well because he's there. We wouldn't be able to report on this without him. So shout out to Matthew. And Byron Donalds, who's calling this, of course, what it is, selective prosecution. And so we're glad that you are here and with us today, my friends. We got a jam-packed trial day, day two. We're, of course, going to be covering this indefinitely. So thanks for inviting someone you know or love to come over and join us. We also have member-only streams in the morning. This morning, we had a great stream talking about what's cooking in the House of Representatives. And it's a little bit nerve-wracking. We got into it. NY Renal MD on Locals this morning was not very happy with my analysis. And so we'll have to, you know, settle that later, I suppose. Shout out to NY Renal. But 
we're talking about what happens if Mike Johnson goes away and Hakeem Jeffries comes in and then they pass some sort of a congressional reg re resolution to keep Trump off the ballots under the nine to zero Anderson decision. And yes, I know, ex post facto, I know, I know, bell of attainder, I know, all the things. But it's also the 14th Amendment, which is also a constitutional amendment, which means it has, you know, by virtue of the fact that it's also in the Constitution, you could argue the same force and weight, and they gave Congress an exception to do this. So anyways, we had a great conversation. Shout out to NY Renal and our locals fam and our YouTube fam. Come join us. We do streams six days a week in the morning, and we'd love to have you. It's a great way to support our show, meet some people, and have some fun. We also have robertgovea.com, so we have our PDFs over there, show calendar, newsletter, merch store, all the goodies are over there. Thanks for checking it out. And then come on over to watcherlodge.com. We're doing Sovereignty Saturdays every Saturday, 10.30 Pacific. It is about sovereignty and self-development. We're trying to in increase, enhance our anti-fragility for the times that come ahead. And so come check it out at watcherlodge.com over there as well. All right. Now, with any further ado, without any further ado, with any further ado, without any, let's get right to it and see who is, what's going on in day two. Alvin Bragg, the Democrat Trump prosecutor, is now moving to hold Trump in contempt. Very convenient, since he's a Republican, for him to go after his political opponents and try to use the law to batter them into oblivion. But that's what Alvin Bragg does. Of course, we know he's a Soros prosecutor who already declined to bring this case until Matthew Colangelo from the Biden administration came down and said, you better do what I say. And of course he did, he abided. But now he's moving for contempt. Trump has already been gagged in this ridiculous case. So he cannot respond to people like Stormy Daniels when she releases a documentary bashing Donald Trump. Trump can't respond to Michael Cohen who does podcasts all the time and shows up on Jen Psaki's show to play patty cake with her. So when Trump retweeted a Michael Avenatti truth, Alvin Bragg went haywire as per usual. And so let's see what he submitted into the court, another ridiculous filing in the rigged jurisdiction of the New York State Supreme Court, which is the low level court. Don't let them fool you. They try to pretend like they're, you know, regal or something. We're, we're a Supreme Court. No, you're not, Judge Mercon. <laughs> Give me a break. So here is what Alvin Bragg, who I don't know if we've even seen him in court yet. Here's what his office sent in to the judge. They say, all right, Judge Mercon, we're upset and we have something to say about it. So Bragg and his prosecutors, they show up, they say, you know, Your Honor, on April 1st, this court entered an order and you ordered Trump to refrain from making statements about foreseeable witnesses about their participation in this case. Now, you said that if Trump made any statements, this could pose a very real threat to the integrity of judicial proceedings, which is a which is a moniker. OK, it's the same stupid platitude as democracy. So integrity of judicial proceedings is, you know, the sanctity of our democracy. Right. We have to protect American democracy. It's the integrity of judicial proceedings is saving democracy. It's same thing. Just apply it differently. This is in a court now by intimidating Trump's direct targets, as well as others who may be called to participate in these proceedings. But what about Michael Cohen running his mouth or Stormy Daniels running her mouth? How can everybody run their mouths except Trump? That doesn't have any implication to the trial, but Trump responds to it. Doesn't even say anything, just read truce uh, an Avenatti post and that's it. So here they, they say Trump sought an appeal on this and the court denied appeal. Now the very next day, Bragg says, Trump came out over the weekend. And Trump willfully violated this court's order. Trump posted several social media posts attacking two known witnesses, convicted perjurer, serial liar, Michael Cohen, that's a federal judge who said that, and a porn star, Stormy Daniels, who released a documentary and who has denied that the affair ever took place, as has Michael Cohen, anyways. Now, these attacks unquestionably violate your order, judge, and Trump's violation is willful. This is a continuation of conduct that you've already found to be something that impedes the orderly administration of this trial, the orderly administration of justice, 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 just like democracy. Meanwhile, they're dumping all over justice. What justice? Give me a break. This court warned Trump that any violation of this order will result in sanctions. And so Bragg says, and so you, Judge Mercon, should now hold Trump in criminal contempt for violating your order says Trump is not above the law. Again, a stupid platitude from these people. And he cannot simply disregard judicial orders that upset him. 
And both the public and the participants in the criminal trial deserve reassurance that the justice system stands ready to protect them, ready to protect Cohen and Stormy in the face of Trump's extreme and deliberate provocations, right? So Trump is gagged. They're free to go on the airwaves, on the media. Trump says, does anything, right? Trump didn't even say anything. He just retruthed some other things. Here is some, some background. Uh, on March 26, the judge issued a gag order, illegal, unconstitutional in my opinion, but they don't care. Trump responded by not even tempering his inflammatory rhetoric. Trump's like, get bent. But instead, he turned his vitriol into the court's family because the judge's daughter has been paid $93 million, her company has, from Democrats like Adam Schiff. And then her company writes little stupid advertisements on Facebook to pump their Democrat moron donors of more money. Trump's been indicted, says Adam Schiff Facebook ads, right? These newsletters go out that her company, Authentic Rights, they all get sent out. Trump's been indicted. Help us fight MAGA. Give us money. And, you know, all the brain, smooth brains over there watching MSNBC like, yeah, great. Here's more of my retirement. Here you go. So, so then Trump calls it out as he should. This judge should have clearly recused himself as a matter of law based on the fact that his daughter's getting paid by Trump's opponent. The judge's daughter works for Joe Biden. All right, that's insane. So just put the hat on the other foot and see how you'd like it if Trump's, if, if the judge and their family worked for Trump. Would you think that was fair? No, the Democrats would be crying hysterically about it. Now, as a result, the court issued another order, said, don't you talk about my Democrat daughter and warned Trump, if you violate this, there will be repercussions. Now, then Trump filed a petition to try to appeal this stuff. He sought an interim stay and they denied that. And just one day after the Court of Appeals denied this, Trump posted on True Social. He made a statement that was reproduced by Michael Avenatti. Avenatti said, this case is ridiculous. Avenatti that we shared, he says, we can't be hypocrites when it comes to the First Amendment. He's sitting in prison. It's outrageous that Cohen and Daniels can do countless TV interviews, post on social media, make money on bogus documentaries, all by talking crap about Trump, Trump but he's gagged and Trump is threatened with jail if he responds. Trump re retruthed that. He said, hey, thank you, Michael Avenatti, for revealing the truth about two sleaze bags who have with their lies and misrepresentations cost our country dearly. They say, oh, you can't, that's illegal. Because he called them sleaze bags, because they are. Now, Trump's second statement contained a picture of the official statement of Stormy Daniels that we've already played here. It's a video. I'm sorry, it's a picture. Trump said, look what I found. Will the fake news report it? No, of course not. And that was the image of Stormy Daniels and her I didn't sleep with him denial statement that she signed and confirmed that she denied the affair ever took place multiple times. Now, she turned around and recanted that. But the fact that Michael Cohen signed a similar document, so did Stormy Daniels. Is an, and, and they suddenly have flipped and become the key witnesses in this case. It's insane. Now, the third statement from Trump says, has Mark Pomerantz, the guy who resigned, screaming at Alvin Bragg, has he been prosecuted for his terrible acts inside and outside the DA's office? Remember, we don't know where Mark Pomerantz's communications are, a huge swath of them. Big questions. He was a former prosecutor. Was he using a private cell phone when he was communicating with the rest of the Manhattan DA's office? Maybe, don't know, because we can't find the records. That's what Todd Blanche and the defense team have confirmed for us. So, he was either using a personal cell phone or the data was deleted or something's wrong, but we don't have it. Why? Now, has disgraced attorney and felon Michael Cohen been prosecuted for his lying? Trump said only Trump people get prosecuted by this judge and these thugs. Dark day for our country, MAGA 2024. They're saying, boom, that's a violation. They say for criminal contempt, we have to prove the following. And here it's unequivocal, your order was in place and Trump plainly violates the order. They were willful violations, knowingly done. And so you should impose sanctions and you should direct Trump to remove those from truth. And you should remind him again of his obligations under the order. Under the order. And you, says Alvin Bragg, you judge Juan, Democrat judge donating to Biden, you should warn Trump that he can be punished with future additional sanctions including 
imprisonment if he tries this again. They say the first element of contempt is blah, blah, blah. We've already satisfied this, okay? The court has proper jurisdiction over Trump. You made it unequivocal. You said he's prohibited and he's didn't, he didn't follow your orders. He has loudly and repeatedly complained that this gag order is unlawful in both court filings and public statements, but no court has agreed with his objections and Trump's mere disagreement is no order with the order, is no basis for a defense to criminal contempt. And a lot of people are trying to get Trump ungagged. We're pausing to say shout out to Good Logic. Good Logic is making an attempt to do that. And unfortunately, that attempt was denied today. The TRO denied from our friend Good Logic, Joe Nierman, next door on YouTube and elsewhere, trying to get Trump ungagged. As far as I know, the only journalist, the only person in New York trying to get the gag lifted for Trump, who's not Trump's counsel, is Good Logic. Right. So we're trying to get Trump to be able to speak because that's what we want as the American people to be able to hear from the man who is running for the presidency. But they try to gag him and then Trump gets denied when he responds. So they say Trump violated the order. He posted the statements. He posted them on truth right now. They're just painting by numbers because this is prosecuted what they do. Second, Trump's social media posts are indisputably about known witnesses, perjurer Cohen and Nathan's hot dog, Stormy Daniels. And third, Trump's social media posts concern Cohen and Daniels and their participation in this. And so we know it's about this. He's talking about a highly conflicted, corrupt judge. That's you, judge. He's calling Bragg a Soros prosecutor because he is. He got $500,000 from George Soros specifically. And he's talking about other people in, in ways we don't like. He also made posts about Michael Cohen. Sounds like it's all true facts to me. Trump's statements about these two witnesses were a piece of his broader invective, and he's trying to attack the witnesses. And so therefore, he is now directly implicating their participation in this trial. He asked whether Michael Cohen's been prosecuted for lying. Why, why, why hasn't he, Alvin? How come? A federal judge says he probably lied again in your court. At one way or the other, he lied to the federal judge when he took his plea deal, or he lied in front of Angeron. But you didn't prosecute him, Alvin. You prosecuted Alan Weisselberg because you needed another perjurer on the other side of the equation. So those claims, they say, the same is true of Trump's statements about Stormy. Now, there is little doubt that they're going to use this in, uh, statement to impeach Daniel's credibility in the upcoming trial. That was her little letter that says, I didn't do any of this. So, you know, we had no relationship at all. And so Bragg continues, we'll fast forward through it. Trump should be gagged. Of course he is gagged, but he should be sanctioned for violating the gag. Bragg says, we want a thousand dollars and no more, or to sentence Trump to no more than 30 days jail. Just to be clear about that. If you find him in contempt, your honor, Alvin Bragg, is asking Judge Juan Mercan, another Democrat, one Democrat asks another Democrat, to authorize a court to impose a fine not exceeding $1,000 or to sentence Trump to no more than 30 days jail or both. Fine him and throw him in jail. Here, the court should impose the maximum fine. I'm sorry, this is the authorized amount. They're not asking for it. Here, this court should impose $1,000. Now, if he does it again, then it's in interfering with the fair administration of justice, and then it, it warrants the imposition of the maximum fine. So he's saying, not, Bragg's not recommending he goes to jail now, but he's saying you could go to jail. This court should also order Trump to remove those posts. And you should admonish Trump to comply with this order, and you should warn Trump that future violations of this order can be punished with not only fines, but here we go from Bragg, you better warn Trump that he could face incarceration of up to 30 days. It's absolutely critical that Trump immediately halt any conduct that would violate this order to protect the integrity of the ongoing trial. There is no integrity here at all, Alvin. A finding of criminal contempt, impose sanctions, and issue stark warnings that are the minimum remedies necessary to achieve this indispensable objective. 
signed by the very dramatic, probably a theater kid, Christopher Conroy, over from uh, Bragg's office. You see Matthew Colangelo, that's Joe Biden's guy, who's also on the list. He came from Joe Biden's DOJ. We don't see, I mean, Alvin Bragg's up here, but we don't know if he's in court or not. Don't know if he's taking his shoes off and doing the Tish maneuver, sitting back in the pews, uh, being uh, not really useful. But that is what Bragg sent in. So they want Trump gagged, they want Trump silenced, and they want him fined and threatened with further jail if he doesn't comply. So what's going on in New York? Trump attorney who has represented him but has been moving around from different cases was on with Fox News and was asked, do you think this is going to be a fair trial? Here's what Alina Abba had to say. Based upon what happened yesterday, do you think Donald J. Trump will be able to get a fair trial? No chance. There's no chance of a fair trial here. Remember, just because it's a jury doesn't mean that the judge can't sway them to go one way or another or make things difficult so that jury selection is impossible. That's what's happening yesterday. They spent the first few hours uh, doing things that probably should have been done before a jury was waiting. That discourages jurors to want to sit on a panel. And then they come in and they're told that they can't get off from Passover if they observe it and that you're going to have no break other than Wednesday in the middle of the week. So that messes up everybody's uh, schedules and people don't want to sit for that. That's why we saw half of the jurors say that they could not be impartial and want to walk. So what's your reaction, Alina, to the judge saying, we understand that former President Trump wants to go to the Supreme Court for his other case. It's not going to happen. Might not be able to take off one day uh, to see his son graduate high school. Is it standard for judges to turn requests like that down or do they make those sorts of accommodations usually? No, accommodations are always made by judges. That's why you go over the schedule. If there wasn't such a rigid schedule, you wouldn't be doing that in practice. You go over it, you look at holidays, you look at things of that nature. Remember something about this, Carly. This case has been investigated for eight years. It wasn't brought by Cy Vance. And now DA Bragg is bringing this case after the president had announced that he was running for office again. And it wasn't brought by Jeffrey Berman from the Southern District of New York. And it also wasn't brought by Alvin Bragg the first time. Okay, Alvin Bragg, one, was not going to bring the case. Mark Pomerantz and Kerry Dunn both resigned. They threw a little hissy fit temper tantrum. We didn't work all the right years to be lawyers for this. And they wrote this, you know, nasty gram. Bragg, how dare you? And then Bragg couldn't figure out how to do it. So Joe Biden sent his little hatchet man, Matthew Colangelo, who's already worked for Obama, for Tish, prosecuting Trump, for the DOJ, arguably concocting those other cases against Trump with Jack Smith. And then he goes back with Alvin Bragg to relight the kindling under this case and brings the whole thing. It's directed by Joe. And now, like this wasn't even scheduled for a trial. We were supposed to be in the J6 trial. The J6 got trial is now bumped because we're at the Supreme Court. And so they accelerated this one back and we know that Murkan was colluding with Judge Chutkin to get the trial back on track now. All eggs in this basket because they have no other options. There's no coincidences here. So now he wants to rush it because November 2024 is an election and he's probably hoping he's got this in the bag, even though it's on a completely discredited witnesses that we know have perjured themselves. It's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, that's an accommodation that would normally be made. And it's not just a discourtesy to the president. It's to all the people in there, the jurors, the attorneys that observe holidays, uh, never mind Barron's high school graduation. There's absolutely no rush after eight years other than the fact that in November in 2024 is election day. Well, and the, the process is the pain, right? The process is the punishment. So if Judge Murkan, right, he's already getting his, you know, giddies off here, uh, coming out, making Trump stand up for him every day. All right. He's like, yeah, stand for me, Trump, you know, kind of a thing. They love it. They're all maniacs. So if he it doesn't matter what Trump requests, right? Trump could say, your honor, I would like to not campaign ever. And I'm going to be here every single day of the trial. He'd be like, well, I don't know. We may not need you here for the trial. You better get out there and campaign, right? It's like, it's like bizarro land. So whatever Trump asked for, the judge is just going, oh, your son's graduation. Oh, okay. Nice. 
And we had a similar situation when Melania's mother died. Remember the judge in that case was like, no, you're not going to that either. So it was always a, you know, about punishing him, making it hurt, keeping him off the campaign trail so that the opportunity costs evaporate or, 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 or massive for him, right? It's very expensive for him to be there in terms of the campaign, not in terms of money, in terms of time. Now let's talk about the money, right? Also in terms of the monetary costs, every dollar that the government spends prosecuting him comes out of our pockets. Trump's got to come up with that money from donors, volunteers. They have an endless litany of funds because we are all compelled to pay them and they go to Alvin Bragg, Fannie Willis, and Jack Smith. So here is Stephen A. Smith over on ESPN who is calling this out, says, this is really pathetic from you people. It shows how weak and cowardly you are. Bullies, cheaters, and liars. That's the Democratic Party. And they raise up above them. Look at the people that they look to with pride and joy. Michael Cohen gets hundreds of thousands of views on every one of his stupid videos. Stormy Daniels gets, you know, uh, hagiography documentaries posted around her. E. Jean Carroll is hoisted up and paraded around everybody, all the cable news, right? These people are enamored by maniacs. And now they're, they're using their levers of power to try to remove Trump. Stephen gets it, here's what he says. All you're doing is showing that you're scared you can't beat them on the issues and the merits. That's why he keeps saying, it's a political campaign against me. Because he's right. That's why he keeps saying, they can't beat me at the election, at the polls. This is the only way they could do it. And if you don't put him in jail, and he still goes from being the presumptive GOP nominee to the official GOP nominee, and he goes to the polls, even though he was gonna whine about winning and being, being rigged again, you have given more fodder to that argument. Absolutely, yes, right. Which means we'll never have peace in this country. Because tens of millions of people yep. see what extent the other side is willing to go through just to keep him out of office because Why? they can't beat him on their own merits. And they're going to say, hey, you trumped this up against him again. Yep. And we'll have no peace when all you got to do is figure out a way to beat him. They can't. With what, Joe? On the issues. They can't. But you haven't been able to do it. Yeah, because they can't because their issues are bad. Their policies are bad. It's been a total disaster. America doesn't want to go to more war. We don't want an open border. We don't want most people to lop the genitals off their children, right? All the things. It's insane what their policy perspective is and what their prescriptions are for the rest of us. We lived through it. They had control after COVID. They got to mandate this, that, and the other thing. And we can all see it. We can all see it when we go to the grocery store. So the only thing they have left is to try to stop Trump. They're doing that by using the last levers of power that they have. And it's like a toddler with a firearm, right? It's insane. You would never allow that to happen. They don't even understand what they're doing. They don't even understand the long-term consequence of this. And it's going to ultimately, I think, expose who they are. And it's a painful process that we as Americans have to go through to see this and to sort of live through it. But Trump, of course, has the strength and the tenacity, maybe the only person in America or the world who could live with this onslaught and continue to persevere, but he's doing it. And by doing it, he's holding a mirror up for all of us to see who these people are. And we're going to be here continuing to expose them as they reveal themselves. So thank you for subscribing, my friends. Thank you for liking this video, wherever it is you're joining us. We got some great links down in the description below. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com is our members only community where we talk about other things that we can't squeeze into here on the show. We go live six days a week in the mornings at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We'd love to have you as a membo. We'd like to see you there and back here on the next one. Now we're not done yet, my friends. It's time to get into the trial testimony of the day. Now that we have those initial filings done and out of the way, it's time to get to it. Trump trial day two. We are back in session, picking up with jury selection, and we are going to be going through the transcripts courtesy of Inner City Press, Matthew Russell Lee, links down in the description below, who was there and reporting on X about the day's activities as we seat some jurors 
on day two. But Trump was speaking about this before the day got started. And here is what he said, walking into the courtroom. This was the scene. Fox News reporting this bright and early this morning. Trump joined by Todd Blanche in New York. Thank you very much. This is a trial that should have never been brought. It's a trial that is being looked upon, looked at all over the world, they're calling. They're, they're looking at it and analyzing it. Every legal pundit, every legal scholar said this trial is a disgrace. We have a Trump hating judge. We have a judge who should be on this case. He's totally conflicted. But this is a trial that should never happen. It should have been thrown out a long time ago. If you look at uh, Jonathan Turley, Andy McCarthy, all great legal scholars, there's not one that we've been able to find that said this should be a trial. I called a, I was, I was paying a lawyer and marked it down as a legal expense, some accountant, I didn't know, marked it down as a legal expense. That's exactly what it was. And you get indicted over that? I should be right now in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in many other states, North Carolina, Georgia, campaigning. This is all coming from the Biden Running White for House. This guy can't put two election. sentences together. He can't campaign. They're using that? this in order to try and win an election. And it's not working that way. It's working the opposite way. So check it out. Legal expense. It's called legal expense. That's what you're supposed to call it. Nobody's ever seen it. Nobody has ever seen anything like it. So thank you very much for coming. I'm now going to sit down for many hours. I am now going to sit down. The voters understand it. All you have to do is look at the polls. This is a sham trial, and the judge should recuse it. So defiant through the record. Uh All right. So Trump out there in New York on day two, and we jump right in to the reporting courtesy of inner city press reporting from inside the New York courtroom. Day two of jury selection. Matthew Russell Lee bringing us the news. He's got a sub stack and he's got a bunch of books on Amazon. And let's make sure you know where to follow and to find him. We just retweeted him on our X if you need to follow him there. But here is how the day unfolds. Day two, judge is not in the courtroom yet. Hustle and bustle around the courtroom. Papers shuffling around, murmurs in the background. Trump sitting alone at the defense table. Empty seats, Todd Blanche is up. Emil Bove is on the other side of him. They're up standing talking around. Susan Nicholas, another defense attorney, one seat away from Trump. She's writing some notes down on a legal pad. Todd Blanche comes over. He sits down, lead defense attorney chair. Turns over, starts talking to Trump. They get engaged in a conversation. They're both raising their hands to gesticulate like a couple of Italians. Blah, blah, blah. Justice Mercon, his chair is still empty. Where's the judge? said that they were starting at 9.30 sharp every day, but no judge in session. Maybe Trump and his attorney were pointing to their clock. Where are you at, judge? Time goes by. Everyone's wondering where he is. Boom, door pops open. All right. Oh, gosh, here's this judge again. All right, put your phone away. All right, stand up, stand up. All right. Please be seated. Clerk of the court says, all right, this is the case of people of the state of New York, so-called, versus Donald Trump, case number, whatever. Court is in session. Mercon, the judge says, all right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we've been waiting on some jurors. That's why we were late, not my fault. There are three jurors that we're still waiting on from yesterday. Apparently two of them were in the box. Seats two and eight we're waiting on. Seat 10 called in. Apparently seat 10 feels sick. But she said it's not COVID, though. And she's outside, though. She's in a mask. Anyone here have any objections to excusing her, the judge says? None? No one? Okay, she's excused. She's gone. Get rid of her. All right, now we got seats two and eight. So these are empty. Should we refill the seats on seats two and eight? Todd Blanche says, Your Honor, they should be excused. Todd's looking at his jury notes from yesterday. He's like, I don't like those jurors. They got to go. Uh, they should be excused. They're not here. They should go. 
The judge says, well, let's wait a minute or two. Let's see if they're here. Todd says, fine. A minute goes by. Judge says, okay, whispering. All right, let's bring them in. Uh, I'm told two out of the three are here. And so let's find out if it's seats two and eight or if it's one of the prospective jurors sitting in the audience. Judge is pointing around. Oh, wait, we don't have the two jurors? Okay, we do. Okay, they're lining up and they're going to be brought in. So Todd says, okay, so your honor, so we're moving on without them then? Uh, judge says, yeah, if they come in late, I don't intend to excuse them, but I'll have them in the audience and I'll use them if needed, all right? Todd says, okay. And we're gonna have a little difficulty here. There's gonna be a lot of numbers, a lot of people moving around. So we're gonna try to keep tabs on it. And let's not worry too much about who's going where just yet until we get to the end. When the jury is seated, we're gonna be able to really assess what, you know, follow the bouncing ball to where they landed and have a better idea of what the makeup is. So the judge says, we're moving on. Clerk says, okay, so we're refilling the two seats, the two people that were missing. Judge says, okay, let's start with seat eight. So seat eight, this guy is here. This juror now stands and he answers these questions. Remember, there was a series of questions and they're just saying, give us the highlights of these. So a uh, judge says, you, sir, seat eight, what do you got? Where do you live? He says, live? Well, I'm kind of a nomad. You know, I've lived there for four years or, or nomad. Lived there for four years. Originally from Dallas, I'm an accountant. I was with an oil and gas company, not married, no children. I live alone. I like to play golf. I watch the New York Times. I'm on TikTok and I watch Fox News. Hmm. Might be a good juror. Now, judge says, okay, so seat eight has arrived. And so, okay, you're in seat eight. We're going to move you to seat 10, like a little move, mover. So you move over to 10. And now the juror in seat 10, I'm sorry, back to the audience. Seat eight, now in 10. Okay, what's your number? I'm B35, 3, 354. Okay, so juror 285, you're back in seat eight. All right, so back to seat 10, the guy who just moved, right? See what I'm saying? So tell me more about you. What else do you listen to? He says, a, spot, a sports podcast, you know, if I'm bored or whatever. He says, I have a fraternity brother who is an elected official, and he's a Republican, kind of like that guy. So there may be some unconscious bias, he says. Hmm. You know, I grew up in Texas too, and my friends are from Texas, so I might have some unconscious bias. I'm a little close to Texas. And you know, Texas, you go to Texas, you just like start singing the Star Spangled Banner. You can't help it. He's like, I don't know. I can't help it. So I, I grew up Republican as well. So the attorneys come up, they please approach. This guy's like giving it away. You're like, just be quiet, okay? Just get on the panel. Trump is not up at the sidebar. He's alone at the defense table. The judge says, okay, well, we appreciate your candor. We're going to have to excuse you at this time because you're from Texas and you have a Republican friend and you might have some unconscious bias. So I want to, I want to, you know, sort of parse this out a little bit. Let's remember that there's a bunch of people, they've already been asked general questions about anybody who cannot serve because you're biased. Yes. Okay. Like 50 out of 92 raise their hands. They're all gone yesterday. Then anyone else who just can't serve for whatever reason, not because you're biased, because got to take care of your mama, got to take care of whatever, you know, daycares, raise their hands, they're gone. So the people who are left theoretically have already passed those two filters. So now this guy's like really analytical. He's like, uh, you know, I might have some unconscious bias. We're like, dude. So he gets himself out. He's gone. So then they refill seat 10, which is a bummer. We kind of wanted that guy. So they refill seat 10 with B158. Who are you? This new seat 10. Well, I live in Riverside Drive up in Uptown. What do you do for a living? I review social security cases. Any reason you hate Trump? No. Any reason you can't be fair? No. Okay, thank you. They go to seat 11. Seat 11, she says, well, I don't think I can be impartial. She says, okay, well, we're, you're gone then. Thanks for saying that. Hey, seat 11, you're refilled. B311 goes to seat 11. Okay, B311, let's hear about you. She says, well, I have a wedding on Friday, June 6. Okay, well, could you be back on Monday? Apparently, yeah. So where do you live? Seat 11, Upper East Side. I work for KPMG, whatever that is. I'm not married. I live with my fiance though, who works in a nonprofit. I go to the park. I like to run. I watch CNN, Google, 
New York Post, sports podcast, all the things. But I have to say something. You know, being on this jury, she says, would put stress on my personal life. I'd probably be leaving here and then working. Could you concentrate? Well, it might be difficult, she says. Okay, well, we'll excuse you then. So she's gone. That company was a major accounting firm, KPMG. Thank you for the assist, Golden. New seat 11. Being on this jury would put stress on my personal life. So you're out of here. Now they put B402 back in seat 11. All right, seat 11. I'm sorry, seat one, the judge says. Do you have something to say? What day would you have to miss? Please approach. Okay, so seat one, you're gone. So let's refill seat one. The new seat 11 now says, okay, okay, we've got you seated. She's a woman. Uh, Ma'am, tell us about you. You're up. Where are you from? I live in the Upper West Side. And how far did you go in school? I finished high school, some college. I've got one adult children. One is a postal worker. I get my news from the Daily News, more TikTok. (laughs) No podcasts. I have something on April 30th that's across the street. April 30th, I think we could work around that, he says. Any reason you hate Trump? No. Can you be, any reason you can't be fair? No. Seat 12 goes over to the next one. He jumps up. Yeah, I can't be fair here. Sorry, can't do it. Okay, you're excused. Let's come back up. Now, this is a man who fills seat 12. Jury's moving forward. I live in Chelsea, grew up in Oregon. I'm an attorney. I do corporate law. Our firm is pretty big. We have about 200 lawyers. I like to hike and to run. I listen and read the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, you know, Google. No, I don't hate Trump. No, I can be fair. Seat 13, a woman, East Village. She works in cybersecurity for Google and Wired. I listen to Nerd Wallet and a couple of climate podcasts. My father works for the DOD. My stepmother is an accountant. I dated a lawyer for a while. It was fine. Smiles in the courtroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've dated a lawyer too. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it, can be, it can be tricky. Lawyers are a lot of work, you know, pain in the butt. It was fine. Sounds about right. So, all right, seat 13. How about 29H? Do you currently follow any anti-Trump group or organization on any social media site? Or have you done so in the past? And she says, yes, I have previously. I have followed anti-Trump groups before. And I worry I couldn't get my work done until after 4.30. So she says, you're gone. All right, bye. You're off. C-13 comes back in. Sir, where are you from? He says, Hell's Kitchen. I was born in Mexico. I became a citizen in 2017. I'm not married. Don't have any kids. I live with my dog. I read the New York Times, MSNBC, TikTok, and X. I listen to LGTB podcasts. No, I don't hate Trump. No, no reason I can't be fair. Thank you. So apparently that guy's good to go. That's going to be a problem. So seat 14, Lower East Side. This guy's from Puerto Rico. He does IT consulting. He's self-employed, married, long time. Wife is into writing. I've got no spare time. Hobby is my family. I've got one child, grandkids. Listen to the Daily News, New York Times. No, I don't hate Trump. No reason I can't be fair and impartial. 15 is a man. This guy lives in Battery Park City. He says, I work for a company called Diligent. I've been married twice, had a daughter with my first wife, but she's deceased, rest in peace. I spent time in our second home in the country. I've got collectibles and I'm on the board of my synagogue. And the, I read the ACLU, oh great. The New York Times, Huffington Post and CNN. So also that's a disaster. He says, well, from my daughter's assault, it was primarily a traumatic experience, but I also came out with a general positive view of the legal system. So this guy's daughter got assaulted, uh, you know, like a grab him by the purse situation, but an actual one. Republicans, some relatives are lobbyists. I followed President Trump on X when he was president until they banned him. So it'd be tough to tell my wife not, it'd be tough not to tell my wife what trial I'm on. And he says, you know, that's like, how can I not tell my wife? He said, well, you'd have to. Otherwise, a person not on the jury could have influence. So you can't tell her what case you're on. 
He says, ah, do you hate Trump? No. Any reason you can't be fair? No. Seat 16 next. This is a woman. It says, I've been retired since 2019 and I used to work for the MTA. And then I trained dogs. And she says, I don't read the news every day, but I do have a Facebook account. Wall Street Journal, when my next door neighbor gives it to me. Fox, sometimes. New York One, watch that. I like This American Life, Jennifer Rubin, Hardcore History. In the car, I like Brian Lehrer. Nobody in accounting or finance, though. Says my granddaughter asked me to go to a pro-choice rally one time. I don't know if it was about President Trump, probably. On the social media, there are things I didn't da- ask to be one on there. But I think it's called Occupy Democrats. So question, do you follow any anti-Trump groups? I think so. I don't intend to, but Occupy Democrats? Do you hate Trump? No. Any reason you can't be fair? No. Seat 17, next woman is, next person is a woman. She's from Harlem. She's a teacher. She says, sometimes I listen to The Breakfast Club. My godfather was a homicide detective, but he's retired. A question about Trump. Says, I'm not going to pretend. Being in my generation, I blame it on one individual. So I could not be impartial. And so things pop up. No. So I don't know if she's sticking around, but sounds like she's probably gone. So I could not be impartial. Probably gone. Let's see where this goes. Now, seat 18 is a woman. We move on from 17. I have to go to a wedding in September. Would that be a problem? He says, September? If this case is still going in September, that's going to be a big problem. She says, I like to go to restaurants and play. I like to snowboard. I read the New York Times, Facebook, TikTok. Do you hate Trump? No, I'll be fair. They refill seat one. Seat one is now back. And this woman says, well, my husband and I have a healthcare consulting company. He says, I work in advertising. My father was in the wage price administration before I met him. Judge Mercon continues. We need to refill seat one, please. Clerk is refilling seat one. B250 comes over here. New seat one. Now, how about 32? Do you have any feelings about how Trump is being treated in this case? No, I think he's being treated fairly. I'm not sure that I could be impartial, she says. Okay, you're gone. Clerk says, okay, refilling seat one again. The new seat one comes in. All right, sir, you're up. Uh, I work for the New York City Board of Education. Yeah, involved in crimes. A relative was hit by a stray bullet. Have you been impacted by crime? Yeah. The catalytic converter on my car was stolen. Thanks, Alvin Bragg, New York. Do you follow any Trump groups or anti-Trump groups? Well, I get emails from the Daily Caller. I think it is. I don't generally read the emails, but I could be impartial and I don't hate Trump. And so we get through a nice big panel. Okay, we got a nice group of people. Seat one sounds like he's on there. Everybody else is on there, it sounds like. And so we've got a good row of prospective jurors. Now the judge says, okay, whew, made it. So now the lawyers will be asking you individual questions, right? We're going to avoid deer now. We've got a panel here. We're going to ask some questions. Government prosecutor, his name is Joshua Steinglass. He says, all right, here on this uh, jury panel, does anyone feel they question whether they can follow the law because of who Trump is? Anybody feel like they don't know if they can follow the law because of Trump raises his hand? How do you feel? He says, well, you listen to the facts of the case. And B330 says, well, I'm a public servant and I see this as an extension of that. Okay. Now you also said you had some views about campaign finance limits. Is that right? B330? And she said, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate that candidates have to raise so much money. They're all all writing notes down. Prosecutor continues. "Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you know, this case is really not about whether you like Donald Trump at all. It's really about the rule of law. The question is, did he commit this crime? And have we as the government actually proven it? And you're going to have access to the evidence, which the media has not had yet, at least not yet. 
And so the question is with all of this, can you be fair? B-128 says, well, I was away at a lake without Wi-Fi. And when I got back from my lake, I saw this. So I've not followed this case at all. And he says, that's fine. You don't, like, you don't need to know. I think this guy's got, got a problem. You know, he's like, well, I don't, I don't know anything about this. He's like, that's fine. It's actually easier if you've heard nothing about this case. Anyone else? Any concerns? B-285, did you move? Woman, no concerns from me. Prosecutor says, you're also going to find that some of the witnesses in this case have some bad issues. There's a tabloid publisher. There's an adult entertainer called a porn star entertainer. Give me a break. And a former lawyer for Mr. Trump, Michael Cohen, who's a perjurer. Some have publicly denied what they'll testify to. So he's, he's kind of buttering them up, right? You try to like pre-program the jury. It's called persuasion. Before the act of persuasion, you have to persuade them. Some have publicly denied what they'll testify to, and you're going to learn why, but you're going to make determinations about Trump's intentions with regard to these business record entries. Now, what was he saying around the time of these false entries? You know, what was the climate? Can you do that? Could you return a guilty verdict? No one says no. Judge says, okay, everybody, we're going to take a short break here. Jurors leave. Judge says, Mr. Trump, are you waiving your right to be present at the sidebars? Have you signed that document saying that you're not going to come up here? Sidebars when the attorneys walk up there and talk to the judge outside of earshot of the jury. Trump says, yes, I've signed. I don't need to come up there. Sure. We take our break. Prosecutor's done. Trump's attorney is up. Shout out to Todd Blanche. Defense says, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I represent President Trump. You see him right there. Now, it's important to him and to us that we find jurors who can be fair. Now, every one of you know of President Trump, and that's, oh, that's great. That's fine. So there are no wrong answers here. We just want to hear your opinion. In B-280, what's your opinion of why you're here? She says, well, I'm here for my civic duty. And juror 285 when we were asking about your social media, thinking about that, what do you post? What do you see? You know, most of you read the New York Times, you all said. So 285, what do you see when you're reading it? She says, 285 says, well, I'm a female. So some of my friends have strong opinions about him. Yeah, the females for some reason. Now I'm concerned with sports, so I don't really pay attention. But you're a prosecutor in another borough, though, right? Like, there's a prosecutor on this panel. Would you have assumptions? The prosecutor says it's about whether they can prove the case. Okay, but what's your view about President Trump? I don't really follow politics. I have law enforcement friends who are pro-Trump. Is this real? There's a prosecutor on this case who's currently being considered for a jury? Uh, slot. Wow. It's great. I don't really follow politics. I have law enforcement friends who are pro Trump. Todd Blanche continues next juror. What is your view of president Trump? He says, well, it makes no difference to this case. What my view is, but what is your view? Well, if I were in a bar, I might tell you, but I'm not going to tell you here. Well, just give us a little bit. What do you think of him? He says, I'm a Democrat. There you go. Great. They go to the next juror. Uh, you're an attorney, right? What are your views of President Trump? He says, well, I was a fan of The Apprentice when I was in middle school at the time. Okay. And next, sir, you say that you use Facebook. What's your view of President Trump? Well, I disagree with several policies. My family and friends post things, you know, pro or against policies, but I try to stay in the middle. I just do what I need to do every day. Now, someone said, I don't care. He says, I don't care about your politics. I'm, I'm asking about the individual. You know, we're asking about Trump, not necessarily about your, your voting history. B38, what do you say? 
Well, I can separate my politics from the facts. I'm just here to judge the facts. And B-158, what's your view? You read the same news as the others here. What do you think? He says, well, I have stronger opinions of local stuff than national stuff. And how about you, 292? What's your view? Feelings are not facts. I disagree with some of his policies. So we have a bunch of Trump haters on this panel so far. And how about you, 292? You became a citizen. You know, how does that impact your view? Well, I became a citizen in 2017, his very first year. I'm grateful. And how about you? What's your view of the president? I find him fascinating. He just sets people off. That's true. He says, uh, all right, that's true. Next. Now, how about you? What do you think of him? Well, there's little that we agree on, says this person. And he says, thank you for that, for your candor. So you're going to hear evidence of stuff from a long time ago. Okay, we're rewinding the clock all the way back to 2015. Trump's defense tells these prospective jurors, this might stir up some memories from you. All right, you're going to see some old tweets, but we want to start fresh at zero. Blank slate when we come in here. Can't bring any of that stuff with you. Can you do that? Someone says, whatever came of the tweets, somebody's behind it and filtering it. And so I'm skeptical. I was only on X for two days. He says, well, I know it's difficult to talk openly. I know President Trump is right here, but uh, juror cuts him off. Says, I'm a person of color, you know, not to cut you off. This is the case. That's it. Like I'm a person of color. So that's it. It's okay. B297. How about you? Well, we have different views. You know, that's fine. But this is a person who's on trial. It's like a bloodbath. Most of you read the New York Times, says Todd. Who here is not aware that President Trump is charged in other cases? Anyone not aware? Only one? Okay, so you're aware of these other cases. The rest of you, how does it impact you? How about you? I know there are other cases in other states about other things, but this is the case here and we're on its own merits here. And how about you, 381? What's your view? I'm not super familiar with the other charges. And how about you, 402? I've heard about the other cases, but I just feel like until you prove them guilty, how can I say? You know, he speaks his mind. He stirs the pot. And I want to say some other things too, but my mother said, be nice, says this 402. I got some other things, but my mama told me to be nice. You're on the Trump case. Defense says, you're also going to hear about Michael Cohen and Kellyanne Conway and Hope Hicks. Would that impact you? Everybody's shaking their heads. No, it's not going to impact us. What if there's no defense case? Can you accept that burden? Can you just, if, if we don't even say a thing, can you accept that, that the burden is on the government? Trump could sit there and not say a word this whole case. If they haven't proven their case, that's their problem. Because the presumption of innocence lies with the defense and the burden of proof relies on the government. So they all say, oh, we can handle it. We're great. Now the judge chimes in. He says, all right, jurors. Now the law provides for the lawyers to make some decisions. And so I'm going to ask you to step out. And this is going to take some time before we get to this jury leaves. They're all scribbling around on their paper. Judge says, are you ready? Todd says, no, not yet. Okay. Then at 2.15, but you should be ready then and bring them in. So the jurors come in, they're excused and we're back. And the jurors are out now. Okay. So the jurors are excused. And now we're having a dialogue inside the courtroom with the jurors free and the attorneys are back in. Judge Mercon says, okay, we're back on the record. Counsel's present. We got the prosecutors, Bragg and the Trump people here. Mr. Trump is present. Everybody ready? Todd Blanche says, yes, we are. Your Honor, there are a number of the jurors that we have social media posts for that are very much contrary to what they said. We got their names. We looked them up. Now, we don't want to confront them openly about this, but we got to bring it up. Like they've got a bunch of you know, rants about trumping mega, mega, mega. The judge says, well, they were told it is an anonymous jury. They were not told it's an anonymous jury. 
I said, okay, well, juror number one has a series of extraordinarily hostile Facebook posts. Juror number one is just rabid. Judge says, well, can I see them? He's okay. Was I handed the right thing? This screen has two different screen grabs. He says, well, this only shows people. There's a photo of people here and it says, spread the honking cheer. And she says, well, yeah, that, that, that was election day. It was a celebration of the results of the election. So she was like, like thrilled that Trump lost so-called in the rigged election says, well, it was a, it was a celebration. And the government says, well, there's no reference to Trump. He says, well, so how's this biased that she's celebrating Trump losing? How's this biased? Well, when the juror was asked her opinion of Trump, she said nothing. But when he lost the election, they celebrated. They got in the car. They spread the honking cheer. They're in a video where they're driving around honking because nah, 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 they're psychos, right? Can you play it for me? Here, they play it. They play it. Well, how do we know this is the juror's account? It's just based on the name. He's like, well, my daughter has a bunch of videos like that. How'd you find that? Maybe she's like texting his daughter, Lauren. Hey, they can find you this way. Delete those too. Trump's lawyer, Susan Nicholas, your honor, this was an anti-Trump rally that she was at. And he says, well, it might be. I'm going to ask her to come in and you can ask her the questions herself. So, okay, seat one, B133, she's coming in here. We're going to ask her about her Facebook posts. Mercon says, before she comes in, I don't want this to be a cross-examination. So just a couple questions. They bring her in. Judge Mercon says, okay, hey, juror uh, seat one. Thanks for coming back in. Lawyers have a couple of questions for you. Todd Blanche for Trump's defense stands up. Hey, ma'am, we have a question about the 2020 election. There were some videos around 96th Street. She says, oh, I remember that. Yeah, the cars were honking. It reminded me of the 7 p.m. during the pandemic, you know, out on the fire escape. Now, okay, thanks for the filling in the gaps there, juror. You suggested a full-on celebration in New York with a heart. You wrote, spread the honking cheer. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. But I believe that a juror's job is to understand the facts of the case. Some walked out yesterday, and I believe I can be fair. The judge says, yeah, I think so too. I appreciate you coming back in. Yeah. Judge says, hey, Todd, Mr. Blanche, your client was saying something when the juror was only 12 feet away. I will not have anyone intimidated in this courtroom. And so you tell your client, right? The juror left already. So she comes in. They're talking about the Facebook post. Trump says something. Juror leaves. Judge Mercon blasts blast Trump. Don't you speak while she's here. Todd says, your honor, she didn't just post the video, okay? She commented on it and she must be dismissed. Alvin Bragg's office says, well, your honor, notwithstanding the propriety of trolling on the internet, this juror did not express bias. Okay. Judge says, we're not going back and forth on this. Don't be ridiculous. I found her explanations credible. There is nothing offensive. I wasn't sure you'd even given me the right thing. I observed her and I found her credible. Trump is whispering in his other lawyer's ear, Emil Bove. And so the challenge is denied. So this woman who is like celebrating, driving around, honking horns, I guess making videos in full on celebration, spread the honking cheer is on the jury. Judge says no bias at all. Clearly fair. Clearly fair, you know, because Trump lost and she, you know, apparently is neutral. Really wants to be on the jury. I can do the, I can be honest, your honor. He's like, yeah, you can. Great. So Todd says, okay, well, how about this one, judge? Let's go on to seat two. Let me show you this one. This guy literally tweets, lock him up, get him out. We can't have a juror like that. So let's put a pin in this one. He says, let's bring him in, says the prosecutor. But how was this research conducted? The profile photo has two people in it. So how do we know who said it? And the judge says, well, your question was way too broad. Like, what is your opinion of Trump? It's way too broad. Well, it's open-ended on purpose so that we can ask about that. He says, judge says, oh, fine. Okay, let's bring him in. B38. This juror said, lock him up, get him out. And I want to just remind ourselves that there were other people 
who already excused themselves, right? Honorable people who said, I've got bias. Clearly, I don't like this dude. And they self-selected to remove themselves, right? They, they did the thing of integrity, like that guy from Texas. I don't know. I might even have unconscious bias. I got to go. This person tweeted, lock him up, get him out, and then didn't excuse himself, okay? Said, no, I'm not biased at all. I can be totally fair and impartial, even though he absolutely hates Trump, wants him in prison. Now he gets to sit on a, on a jury panel that literally gets to decide whether to lock him up. He should have excused himself. Now he'll probably get booted from the jury in a minute. But my point is he didn't self-select him out, his, himself out. Okay, people are not gonna be a good judge of whether they can be fair and impartial. This shows you how corrupted the whole process is. The fact that he's even still in the room. You get to be the judge of yourself. So clearly he's gonna say he's fair. So he has an opportunity to lock him up. So they bring him in. Did this happen on Facebook? He says, yeah, it did. So there's another question. They bring this juror back in, B-35's back in the courtroom. Todd Blanche, Trump's defense says, I wanna show you this. Is this your account? He says, yeah, that's my account. Do you remember putting this up? He says, it's on my account. Thank you, says the judge, and he leaves. Now, the judge finally gets it. He says, you know, celebrating the end of the travel ban was one thing, yeah, but expressing a desire that Trump be locked up, this case could result in jail time, and that is lockup. So I'll excuse this juror for cause. Next, he's like, I can't believe that guy actually posted on it. So that guy should have excused himself, clearly, right? He knew better, he got caught, and then the judge had to excuse him because Trump's team looked him up and figured it out. Even, even the judge is like, well, I don't know. And how many other people are gonna be able to hide it, right? There's no honor with these people who are trying to get on. So there's another one, Trump's attorney comes back out. 3.30, it's her husband's account. It has a meme of President Trump's head being held. The Kathy Griffin severed head, remember that? So wife is on the jury panel, Hu husband wants Trump decapitated. Says, well, there's also an image of Barack Obama, then your client, and it says, I don't think this is what they meant by orange is the new black. Maybe some meme or something. Todd says, well, we'd like to ask the juror for family. He said, oh, we're not going to go to this. You should have asked if you have the goods. And the, and the prosecutor says, it's humor, your honor. It's just a joke. Okay, it's not a window into their soul. And the judge says, so I'm not gonna allow you to inquire about her husband's post from eight years ago. This whole case is from eight years ago. It's humor, though it's not very good humor. Who's next? So jurors, Kath, yeah, Kathy Griffin's whole career went into the toilet because it's not funny. Actually, it's not humor at all. It's, it's like psychopathy. Like it's a funny thing to have a, a human decapitated and you hold their head in your hand? What? So the household, so the woman is married to a husband who wants Trump decapitated, think, that, think that's, that's funny and they're gonna be on the panel, great. Juror number six, there's a video. Trump quote, I'm dumb as F and he posted about the 96 jurors and answered if he was a juror, he said he can't say I have to return tomorrow. And he says, we think he complied with your honor's order. And so let's bring him in. So they bring this juror in. They say, I want to show you this account. He says, yeah, that's my account. I sell buttons to support a pack that supports bringing out the vote. What are the names of your pack? Movement for voters. Okay. And did you watch this video before you reposted it? No, I didn't. I just reposted it. And the video says, Trump, I'm dumb as F. Something like that. Okay, thank you, juror. And so he leaves. So it says, I can't credit the juror's responses. I didn't believe him. So cause accepted, guy's gone. So then we pause. They come back with the people that they're going to strike. Prosecutor says, okay, we move to strike prospective jurors. And Trump's attorney strikes two. Five and 10 are now gone. 
So they move the seats forward. Seat four, B400 becomes one and R4 person. Nine becomes two, 12 becomes three, and they read them out. Judge says, all right, everybody, I've been handed photos. It says, quote, Trump invites Thai boys to the White House. Thai boys request to return to cage. What? Been handed photos. Yeah, Trump's lawyer says, Todd Blanche, he says, yeah, your honor, those are from this case. The, the juror said she didn't remember if she had posts on Facebook. He says, okay, let's bring her in. Uh, hi, ma'am. We want to confirm this is your, pa- your Facebook post about Trump and Thai boys. Is this you? He says, I don't know. It could be my Instagram. I'd like to say I remember posting it, but I don't. You know, I stopped posting about politics. It's gotten too vitriolic. Yeah. Well, did these posts refresh your recollection? No, but I probably did post those. Okay, thank you, says the judge, and she is excused. Unlike the juror who said he wanted to see Trump locked up, she didn't express anything negative other than disagreement. And he says, you're right. So I won't strike her for cause anymore so she can stay on, even though she shares anti-Trump memes. Government strikes B-146. Defense strikes 292-198. And they all shift forward. Now, I'd like to swear some of these people in And then I'm going to ask them to come back on Monday. And so they bring them back in. Says, okay, you will be called and these will be your permanent seats for the trial. Announces all. Juror one, you're B400. Juror two, you're B280. 381, you're juror number three. B89, you're juror four and so on. Now, if you're not called here, you may leave. They all hustle out of there. Now, I ask you to come back on Monday at 9.30 for opening statements. Well, my instructions, then opening statements, and we're going to be choosing six more jurors and some alternates and probably six. And so those of you who are remaining, we are not done with you yet. First, we're going to swear in the group for Thursday morning so that they can go, and we may work past 4.30. Any hardships here? No hands? Counsel, please come up to the bench. They return. Judge says, can the defense confirm that all this social media you're using, it's public? Defense says, yeah, it's very much public. Of course, we're not the FBI looking through Trump's DMs like Jack Smith was, judge. Now, the Thursday pool enters. We're still trying to pick up some jurors. And he says, next, we're going to do void deer with the remaining six. First, we'll take a 10 minute break. Then we're going to resume. But since there are no longer 12 in the box, please don't take more than 15 minutes. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Now we get some new jurors in to continue selecting. Clerk calls you forward. Judge, uh, the clerk sets them in. Seat three, B352, B269, they all start moving in. Okay, seat one again. Okay, we got a new person in seat one. Tell us about yourself. I'm a doctor and I'm concerned about how long this could take. He says, only you could tell us. I'm going to excuse you. You're out. He's gone. Seat two is a woman. I live in Harlem. Been living there for five years. I teach in a private school. I read the New York Times, MSNBC, Google. My roommate is at Legal Aid in the Bronx. 34 is yes. I have strong opinions about Trump. You have strong opinions? Yes, I do. Okay, you're out. Seat three lives in Upper East Side. He works in real estate. He says, I used to work for BT Alex Brown. My wife doesn't work. She's at home taking care of the kids. They're 13 and 16. I play tennis. I like to golf occasionally. And I work with the New York City Partnership and REBNY. I like podcasts. I listen to What's News. I know a lot of people in finance and on social media. When I first used Twitter, I did follow Trump, the president. I was just learning about it. I don't use it anymore. No hard feelings about Trump. Nothing that means I couldn't be partial. In full disclosure, I'm in real estate, which is what Trump's in, you know. So I know people who know the president. Okay, thank you. Seat five's a guy. Says, I live in Upper East Side. I'm originally from North Carolina. Used to work at a Gibson Dunn law firm. I've got a JD. My wife's in risk management at a bank. I read the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and the Post. Don't hate Trump. No reason I can't be fair. Seat six. This person's from Upper West Side. Retired law enforcement, photographer in the New York PD. 
Department of Corrections. Now I work for security firms, small business owner, BA Communications, two children, one I don't talk to. Any hobbies? Well, the four C's, including computers and charity. I belong to a Democratic club. It has nothing to do with anything, though. I was on a case. Merv Griffin and Donald Trump. I have friends that have done time. I'm a little nervous because I'm kind of in the spotlight here. This guy's talking a lot. I park in the housing project parking lot. I see the guys I grew up with. Some of them commit crimes. You know, it is what it is. No, I don't hate Trump. No, I can't be fair. I can't not be fair. Here's the next person. Well, this, this guy says, I can't give up my job for six weeks. No way. He says, okay, now you're excused. And so now we're going to get the attorneys asking some more questions. For Alvin Bragg's office, Susan Hoffinger comes up, says, hey, B352, you said you're in real estate. You have any views of Trump's work? Well, I've seen the work. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an admirer from afar, I guess. He's built big, beautiful buildings. What'd you think of the art of the deal? He says, I thought it was entertaining. Looks at Trump. Trump says like this. MAGA. Now Trump lawyer asks 352, what do you think of President Trump? He says, that's a loaded question. There's a lot of history there. There are things I disagree with and there are things I think were well done in his presidency. Oh, he's done. Charge him with a crime. Oh, I remember the Central Park, but I'm interested in how he stirs people up. You know, it's up to the jury. This isn't showmanship. This is real life. A man's life is on the line. The country is on the line. I have a public access show about Harlem. Judge says, hey, jurors, please step out of here. Are there any challenges for cause on three, four, five? Seat four looks like that's gone, becomes bring them back in. And then there are seven back. And so looks like that's the day. So, okay. Justice Mercon, any challenges for these people? Let's bring them back in. Juror four becomes juror number seven. So we've got seven jurors seated now. And then there were seven. And that is the day. Judge Mercon says, we've kept everyone late enough. See you back here on Thursday. And so that is day two brought to us by Matthew Russell Lee at Inner City Press doing amazing, incredible reporting. We would not be able to review this without him. And so be sure you are following him on X at Inner City Press, Matthew Russell Lee, icp.substack.com and on Patreon as well, slash Matthew Russell Lee to support his work. We're grateful for Matthew and his reporting. And the links are in the description below. So make sure you follow him, support him, subscribe to his Substack, and subscribe to him on X because he actually posts some additional stuff there as well. And so day two, my friends, is now in the can. We do have what it sounds to be seven jurors who were there on the panel. And so we're going to do our work assembling the details. Who are these people? What's their background? What do we know about them now that they start to be anchored in? And we'll have some details on that as the trial unfolds. But a very expected day, some interesting questions to me felt like a very anti-Trump demographic and a very non-surprising feature of this is that people are not good at self-selecting. Are you biased? No, not biased at all. Well, what are all these posts about? Oh yeah, because they want to get on there to do their due diligence to wipe out their political opponents on behalf of the DNC. Here is Byron Donalds, who was commenting on this, explaining what he thinks about the selective and vindictive prosecution taking place in New York. If they could do this to Donald Trump, they could do this to any American. But the truth is, Alvin Bragg would not do this to any American, which means that he is, this is selective prosecution. This is political interference. The American people see it for what it is, and it should not be allowed to continue. You got this judge who said that President Trump can't even go to the graduation of his son. I mean, come on, that is pure spite. It is motivation for them. This is what the radical left wants to see happen. They don't care about justice. They care about getting their pound of flesh. And that is not what the United States of America is about.
Yeah, the judge saying yes, sir. It depends on where we're at at the time of the trial uh, and how things are progressing, whether or not I'll, I'll let you leave the courtroom to go to your son's high school graduation. A lot of people online saying, why couldn't you just come out right and say, yeah, you can go to the ceremony here, take one day off. Um, I wanted to ask you, though, Congressman, about how independents and even some Republicans might be viewing this trial. Again, it could be wrapped up by the time the November election comes around. And if Donald Trump ultimately, by the jury, which again is based in New York City, uh, convicts him, that could impact how people might vote in November according to some polls. I'll just break down the numbers here. About half of independent voters, matters. one in four Republicans say they would not vote for him if he were a convicted felon by election day. How are you reading those polls? Do you think the Trump team should be taking that to heart? That's their game plan from the well, left. Well, first of all, the polling, it all depends on how they put that question together. That's number one. Number two, people will say that in a vacuum generally when they're answering a, a poll sitting at home. It's another thing when you have to evaluate that information throughout an election process. And when you go back through how frivolous and BS these charges are, I think people are looking at that and say, they're going to say, man, this is all politics and this is all a show, especially considering the fact that under Al in Bragg's leadership in Manhattan, Manhattan is less safe. There are crimes that they're actually busting down to misdemeanors that should be felonies that they're not prosecuting, let alone the stuff that they don't prosecute at all. This is all for politics, it's all for show, and you're going to have President Trump and many people on his team, like myself and others, who are going to make that case to the country. And I think voters are going to see the logic in that, the reason in that. And at the end of the day, the American people know when something is fair and when it is not. If people know that this is an unfair process, it is a process that they basically rigged, even how they're going through the jury selection process, where they're asking if you attended a Trump rally, do you watch Fox News? And if you say yes to those questions, the district attorney is suspending you from being able to, to sit on that jury. This is a farce. And yeah, but they didn't ask about BLM or the other you know, major Democrat organizations. We had a whole list of them. Uh, the ACLU was not on that list, although someone mentioned it today. You know, do you work for the government? Did you work for a Biden campaign? I think Antifa was on there. But any other lefty groups, they didn't even care about or ask about. It was all to identify prospective Trumpers. When you have the opportunity to make that case, I think voters will see for it what it is, especially when you put that in light of the fact that Joe Biden, Mr. Master of Disaster himself, will be left in charge to run the country. I think American voters will see right through that and support President Trump. All right, we're going to do everything we can to continue to spread that truth, to show what's happening here behind the scenes. We got some amazing independent journalists like Matthew Russell Lee and others who are there like Joe Neerman, Good Logic who are there fighting to bring us the truth, to ungag the president, to show us what's happening inside the court of law because no cameras in the courtroom. The judge has kept the docket on lockdown. They're throwing certain people out saying it's full. Good logic can't even get admitted to the building yesterday. So it is a partisan attack using the justice system. But the more people see it, I think the more they'll realize that this is society ending. If you don't have a justice system, there's really no society that you can have because the people in power just corrupt the mechanisms of power for their own end and you devolve into totalitarianism. So that's where we're headed and these people are full steam ahead trying to take us there. But as they do, they'll continue to expose who they are. Byron Donalds, I think is right. They're showing us who they are. They're, we're holding a mirror up for all the world to see who these people are. And we're going to be here continuing to expose it. So thank you for joining us as we do, my friends. Thanks for inviting someone you know and love to come over here. Join us when we do our live streams or share a short video with them. Share a segment so they too can see what's ultimately happening so that they're better apprised and energized and motivated when it's time to vote. And we're grateful to have them here joining us with you. And so we got great links down in the description below. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking this video. Thanks for checking out watchingthewatchers.locals.com, becoming a membo. We, we do streams in the morning. We get into other stuff that we can't squeeze in here. It's a little bit lower key, a little bit uh, organic. We talk about a lot of fun stuff. We'd love to have you join us. Come check us out, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one. All right, my friends. Well, that is it for us on the day. We got some jurors seated and we're going to have to do 
uh, post eval to see who they are. Bragg moving to hold Trump in contempt, but we had some good reaction from Alina and Stephen Smith. Now, my friends, let's hear from you. Let's see what you have to say about this before we go over to watching the watchers dot locals dot com. We had this one from yesterday, I believe. This was from Tony Hay Munkets that we missed yesterday. Says, hey, what's up, Tony Hay? Great suggestion. Says, maybe with all the bad news we're getting, you should show a couple of minutes of puppies at the end of the news stream. Well, my friends, we don't have to wait a minute for this because Donut Mind Me has facilitated our puppy extravaganza. This one is from Zach Nichols. Look at this handsome boy from our friend Zach. Shout out to this handsome man, courtesy of Zach Nichols at the Zach household. Indoctrination. Say hello to this real good boy who wants to have a conversation with you very aggressively. We got Sergeant GPS with these two pups. And we know one of these is very well behaved. The other one's a little bit of a troublemaker. We got this one from Ripple. Ripple, who is a very senior pup, who has been a real good gal her whole life. And so shout out to Ripple and Lady Ice. And um, <laughs> we have that one, which we'll leave off. That's a fun locals one. It was a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, eating someone. I'll just leave that one alone. Hey, so thank you to Donut. Donut is doing such an awesome job. We missed some of these yesterday. I'm sorry that I missed these. My fault. But Lowell Skinner, yesterday Lowell Skinner, Skinner became a membo. Yesterday on Rumble, Lynn RX says, remember, anyone who's still a Democrat doesn't care if it's unfair. Absolutely true. They don't care if it's legal. They don't care if it's honorable, if it is something that will have generational concern. They don't care. It's about now, right now. I want it now. And it doesn't need to be fair. It doesn't even need to be legal. They'll do whatever they can. Lynn RX, thank you for that. Sorry I missed you yesterday. Hopefully, we have you here on the Rumbles. Thanks for joining us on Rumbles and for a nice dono. Cowboy Rob says, 10 bucks, they lock him up. We'll have chaos in the streets. I think that's a fair assessment. I don't think I'd want to take you up on that one because it's likely. If they did lock him up, there would be a big problem. Not that I'm encouraging it. It would just be insane of them to do that. The Chugi Show says, any news from Joe? Not posted anything yet. Thanks for being a member for eight months, Chugi. One month, tell a baby. And yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Unfortunately, the TRO got denied. And so, and not to be unexpected, you know, not unexpected. This is New York we're talking about. But I'm sure Joe will have a lot of uh, follow-up on that on his channel. So check out Good Logic on YouTube. Check out Good Logic on Locals and on Rumble to get the latest from our friend Joe. Rob White says, I meant that they are so anxious from TDS that they, can, that they can't stay in the same room with Trump. I have to get out of here and get to a counselor quick. They're like, yeah, give me some Rachel Maddow before I lose it. Voice of the People says, the video I sent you is the missing piece you mentioned, and I stay mostly on Rumble except for the off-label podcast. Okay, Voice. So Voice of the People is mostly on Rumble, but the one I got you. So Voice of the People sent me an interesting video. And so check out his work, Rumble, off-label podcast from Voice of the People in the House. Rob White says, I don't think it gives Crazy Eyes Griswold the right to remove him from the ballot. It is Congress who would have to be the person to remove him from the ballot. The states still don't have that right. So Congress could make the decision that he is disqualified and then the states could rely on that interpretation would be my understanding of how it would work practically. So in other words, the, the state court can't make a decision. Like what Jenna did is her execution to get Trump removed was to have a trial in Sarah B. Wallace's courtroom. If the federal Congress does that, then I think she could rely on that and she could look to a 9-0 Supreme Court decision to do it. That's why I get scared. T. Lewis says, so since Trump is looking at potential jurors, a thing to put out there, will the courts gag his eyeballs next? All right, put a blindfold on him. He's looking at jurors. Put a blindfold on him and a literal gag now, right? Maybe, could be. What's up, Gag says, Zero Hedge is reporting that the flyers are from RCM, which is an NGO 
affiliated with Mayorkas. Hey, the Rubos are here with a very nice prayer for Trump and the 2024 election. Let's come back on that one. Remember, remind me to read that one. NY says, Rob, you keep saying this about passing a law barring Trump. You know, anyone can clip what you say and use that. How does a law pass now get past ipso facto laws? And we talked about that one this morning on locals. So hopefully we got that one answered. This old guy says, Republicans in the House better get their act together right now. I know a one vote margin is nothing, but the constant chaos in the leadership is dangerous and beyond stupid from this old guy. V is never silent, says, oh no, my leaf blower guy has a whistling noise leaf blower. Ugh. Yeah, that's a problem. It's like a high pitched squeal. T. Lewis says, did the House have a resolution stating that Trump did not engage in an insurrection? I think that uh, Matt Gates tried to introduce something like that, and I thought that was kind of a foolish thing because he probably wasn't going to get the votes, and then they would say, see? Yeah. Last week, Thomas Massey, Gag says, was saying that when you go into a skiff, you don't take your staffers. You don't take your phone. You're very alone. They often use this moment to spook you into their way of thinking. He calls it the haunted house. Now imagine if hypothetically you're in the skiff and you see surveillance evidence of something scandalous you've done. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, they show they show a dossier of you. And they say, you're going to do exactly what we want or this goes public. Glocky says, it's just breaking now that Mayorkas revert, worked for the same NGO that handed out those flyers. Sandy says, I'll find the history professor to explain what took place in 1865. The Dems will follow this because there is precedent. Yeah, which is why I think it's concerning if they, if they boot... If Mike Johnson goes away, as much as I can't stand the guy because of, well, basically everything he's done since he's taken the gavel, uh, has le- le- makes me concerned because if Hakeem Jeffries has it, he will bring to the floor a vote to remove Trump. So I'd be concerned about that. So I think it's the reality. I know people don't want to hear that, but I'd be concerned about it. And there, there's some curiosity in my mind because I don't know the Democrats are actually, I think, trying to fight for, I've read some stories that they might want to keep Johnson because of the Ukraine money. So maybe getting Ukraine money is more important than removing Trump or something. I don't know. But Sandy, thanks for backing me up on it. Hey, let's go. Brandon says, that's it. I'm filing for child support, deadbeat. Oh, great. I'm going to have to be on the run again. Let's go. Brandon's coming for child support. I, I ain't got it. Hey, hey, it's the Munkets is here bringing in five new members. Angelia Green, John O, Jackie G, William L, and Freed, all gifted members, courtesy of Tony Hay in the house. Trump is going to visit Harlem. Uh, uh, what did Jill call it? A bodega? A bodega? Where D.A. Bragg charged the owner with murder for protecting himself with a vi- from a violent thug. Well, that's good. Trump's going to go make some visits in New York. Glocky says, again, not a single Republican D.A. or A.G. will do a damn thing. At least Amuse is on it. Shout out to our friend Amuse on X. Great account to follow. Shout out to Robbie Starbuck, another great account. What's up? Glocky says, if a conservative group set up a website to make voters think that the website was the Secretary of State's website, the feds would be kicking in doors. This is unbelievable. They're stealing the election right in the open. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, probably true. We got this one from Sandy. Says, I've been keeping up with these musical chairs of these jurors. This is the profile we know about for the foreman. Could be worse. Not sure if the jury voters in the new foreman, but so far this is him. Male, waiter, some college, New York Times, some Fox, some MSNBC. Not bad. We got William L. Says, shout out to generous members who gift memberships. I Amen to that. William L. Seven months as a membo, two months tell a baby, and we're on our way. Hey, T.A. Holloway says, I resent working as a government slave for five months a year just to see our tax dollars being misused and wasted on this phony persecution and election interference. I know it's amazing what we work for, right? Work for them to prosecute our own political candidates that we want to vote for, and then war. 
And then uh, apparently a bunch of military stuff that just kind of floats around in the water, I guess. We got flagpole guy says, God bless President Trump. That is a nice flagpole from flagpole guy. Hey, hey, it's the monkey. It's Tony Hay is bringing in five more members. Saffon, Damon W. We got sweet tats here. Mr. E and Kevin H. All coming in as our newest of members. Muffin Rando says jailbirds sing for the Trump trial should be the headline. Membo for seven months, Muffin Rando, two months more, tell a baby. Hey, what's up, Glocky says, so Rob, here's my idea. You, Joe, Viva, Barnes, Nate, start an organization to do lawsuits, push back on censorship, big pharma, gun laws, government overreach, election integrity, go to legal war with everyone. Yeah, I mean, that's a tall order, Glocky. If we had a billionaire Republican who could just fund that operation like they do for the, for the left, you might be able to create something like that. You'd have to dedicate a lot to it. Like I, there's no way I could do the show and create content and run something like that. Like no way you'd have to dedicate yourself to that exclusively. And you'd want, you know, like those guys are smart lawyers, but you, uh, you know, you'd want someone who is like kind of a little mental, you know, like a little bit off to run that who just dedicates 24 seven out, you know, just to like the legal strategy. And they're just like, you know, I have some people in mind, but, uh, it's a good idea. Just Rhonda. What's up? 10 members. Just Rhonda. So nice of you. 10 members coming in. We got the conservative life is here. Pat H Catherine H Sean L Allen H GNR lawn service is here. Blocks are here. Rusty B. Philip H and Pinochet's helicopter tours, all gifted memos, courtesy of Just Rhonda in the house. Very good to see you, Just Rhonda. Thanks for bringing in 10 new memos and for being a membo yourself. Glocky says, DeSantis should tell Trump that if he's in Florida, he won't honor the arrest warrant from the state of New York and will arrest any person from New York that tries to serve a search warrant in Florida. And Trump's Secret Service detail should tell this POS fascist Democrat judge to go ahead, try to order someone, put their hands on Trump. A pushback against this BS needed to happen like yesterday. Roxy Loyola, what's up as a new supporter over on the tubes? And Sweet Tet, 12 months as a membo. Sweet, you've been catching gifted membos for 12 months? It's possible, my friends. See, that's amazing. A full year? just off gifts. It's incredible. So you've earned it. I mean, that, that, that means you're here like every day to catch those giftos. Awesome. Sweet Tat. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. And friends, thanks for gifting membos all over the place. Hey, G gum is sharing this one. G gum over on locals, our meme Smith, the best place to be on the tubes is right here. Well, we're grateful that you are here, G gum. And here, here was Here's this one. This is one of my favorite ones. So this is Donald Trump. You can see he is boxing the DOJ right now. DOJ is just swinging at him like mad. And he just doesn't even, not even, not even worried about it. And that face right there doo -doo 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 -doo, is exactly what Muhammad Ali did in the ring. And we got this one from former says the George Allen Kelly trial is being ignored by everyone. And this is the same abusive process that they are using against former President Trump. The defense starts tomorrow with no ballistic confirmation and no murder weapon. Welcome to the new America. Sandy says, Trump says legal expense. Was it marked as legal expense or retainer? Trump doesn't lie. Huge difference. Mainstream media says he marked it as a retainer. I paid tons of legal expenses that were actually reimbursement for things my attorney fronted the money for. I see what you're saying. So like they got expert witnesses or something and then you reimburse them. Yeah, it's gonna be curious to see what Bragg's theory of the case is. Rob over on Rumble says, H.A. Goodman channel has a video of Stormy and Michael Avenatti saying Cohen is a liar. He called himself Trump's fixer. Haha, <laughs> play that in court. Democrat judge, probably won't allow it. You're probably right. Probably going to protect Stormy and Cohen as best he can. 
Glockies on Local says, listening to these jurors and how much they hate Trump and don't even know him isn't about Trump. They hate you. It's a good point, Glocky. They do. Occupy Democrats is nothing but a DNC bot account that shares the most ridiculous fake news memes about Trump and his supporters. Tree Climber gifted one membo over to Carrie Who Saw What's It. Carrie Who Saw What's It. And coming in as a membo, thank you, Tree Climber, for bringing Carrie in. We got Glocky saying, this is just one example of what Occupy Democrats posts. Just stupid memes, useless memes. Glocky says, this is what Trump is up against in New York City. A majority of Dems follow Occupy Democrats and they actually believe their memes. What the Dems are literally doing, what the Nazis did, and I mean literally, minus the concentration camps uh, aspect. CGI Joe says, Rachel K, uh, bring, hey, CGI Joe's bringing in 10 new members. Rachel K, Gloria B, Bud Smokius, Eric K, Nicole B, Angry Viking Veteran, Aging Cynic, Robert T, Sassy Tech, and Albert W, all gifted members, 10 members, courtesy of CGI Joe in the house. Thank you, CGI Joe, for bringing them in. Glocky says, it would be straight up based if Trump's lawyers showed up in court, told the judge that in order to protect and defend their client, they aren't going to have him show up until the judge recuses himself or the trial gets moved or the charges dismissed. Hey, here's a Democrat judge from Knox Beerman. You've seen uh, this Democrat judge running the kangaroo court. Thank you from our defense attorney friend, Knox in Texas, the great state of Texas. Kangaroo judge in a kangaroo court prosecuting their political opponents. What's up, Gloria B? Bringing in five new members. We got Valerie H, Judo Joe Black. We got Frank C, James B, and Tonil H coming in courtesy of Gloria B with five new members in the house. Thank you, Gloria. And Christine H is our new supporter. Welcome, Christine. We'll see you in the morning for our members only morning stream. Dolphin fan is the man is bringing in more members. Peanuts Nana, Red Blooded, M Ball, Ralph, and Greg Erickson. All gifted members, courtesy of Dolphin Fan, is the man in the house. Orion Starman says, since we all know how this farce is going to end, would it be better for Trump if this trial ends as quickly as possible? You know, it's a good question. So you've got competing interests. So it just kind of depends. Like if you think it's a foregone conclusion and he's going to get convicted regardless, maybe. Like, okay, forget the show. Let's just get it done with so we can get back on the campaign trail. You know, let's get it over with. Um, if, you're, if you're optimistic that there might be a solid defense possible and maybe he gets a hung jury or a acquittal, right? Which I think is unlikely, but maybe a hung jury, a mistrial. Maybe you'd want to put on a case. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I, I think... I don't know that I would I would accelerate it just for the sake of the campaign. I think that he can create some campaign energy around the trial. So I don't know if I would accelerate it for that. And you'd only accelerate it maybe to, you know, not defend it as aggressively. So I think that they should defend it aggressively, very aggressively, and not not speed it up, is my point. What's up? Rub some dirt on it. It looks like my post about Alina on Benny Johnson's YouTube got gagged. My post about Alina on Benny Johnson's YouTube got gagged. I don't know what that's about, but thanks for the update on that. Rub some dirt on it and you'll be fine. Knox says, happy Tuesday all. Just as an unruly client poisons the tank when in holding, I have noticed these petty vindictive judges are having an effect on the local judiciary. From Knox. You, you mean your local judiciary? You think that like it's spilling over into your practice area? Not good. Hey, Trump just visited the bodega. The crowd went wild for Trump when he visited the bodega. We got this one from Concert Chick. Hey, this is Miss Liberty in the house. Looks like Miss Liberty. As outraged as the rest of us about what's happening out there in this case. Hey, Juan Pablo Corsi says, yeah, totally not rigged. Psych. Jennifer says, thanks for all your hard work, Rob. I appreciate you. And of course, you're very awesome. Watch your family too. Much love. Thank you, Jennifer. We got the best fam here, man. No doubt. Love you guys. Grateful to be here. 
navigating this insanity with you together. And I mean that sincerely. It's wild times. We got Beth is here. A juror should tell judge about himself. Say, uh, they should ask a question. They should ask the jury question. Anybody's daughter raised $93 million for Democrats? Anyone here? Anybody on the jury panel? Any, uh, anyone on the jury panel donate $35 to Joe Biden? Anyone here? Oh, sorry. Those questions were for you, judge. What? That was you I was talking about. Oh, silly me. Let's get back to the other questions here. Hey, Juan Pablo says some of the most freaking lefty jurors in history. Yeah, that's true. You could see it in their uh, answers. Londo says, I'm a little bit off. I'm a little bit off. We all are, Londo, no doubt. Geg says, Rob, thanks for highlighting Good Logic's effort. I subscribed to his locals to give him a little more support. I hope others support him too. I suspect he may need it when the horde learns, learns of his terrible crimes against the deep state. Yeah, I don't know. You know, first of all, we love Good Logic and it's always encouraged to support him and his work. He's doing good work. And I think he's the only journalist in America who even tried. So shout out to him for his commendable efforts. Boopsies here says, seems to me in today's world, no one would admit that they hate Trump or hate at all since, you know, hate is so forbidden. Do you think it's a stupid question to ask, do you hate Trump? No, but I think it's probably a little too strong. I think it would be, I don't know that it would get you the answers you want. Like everyone would say, oh, do you think it's a stupid question to ask? I don't think it's a stupid question. I just don't think it's a bad, it's the best question. Because a lot of people will say, no, I clearly don't hate him. I don't hate anyone. Did they ask that today? Did that come up today? Like, I don't, or I thought it was more broad, like what's your opinion of Trump? Like let people define the terms themselves. Don't give them a word to latch onto would be my response. But it's, I think it's actually a good question, right? It's true. Like if they're being honest, a huge portion of them would raise their hand. Hey, it's NY. Okay, NY. Hopefully, you know, I was just giving you a light ribbing because, you know, we've, we've, been, we've been having conversations for a long time now. Here's the convo from this morning. A congressional resolution says such as a sense of Congress would not cut it in this doomsday hypo. The House actions only need one vote majority in the House would not cut it. These are statements without input of the other half of Congress, the Senate. So they are the equivalent of a press release and cannot rely on any court without Senate approval. Yeah, I know. Says there are tons of resources on that. The Senate filibuster rules means the Senate would need a supermajority, at least 60 votes to be required. And any legally binding 14th anti-Trump law would require the president to sign. And ex ex post facto laws and bill of attainder arguments. He says to pass such a law, it's not happening. Yeah, I think it's a long shot, but I think that there is a, a, a roadmap that they could follow if they wanted to do it. If they had, the, and, and I'm, I was never saying that the house could do it alone. Yeah, it would have to pass. Like it would have to pass both houses and Joe would have to sign it into law. But they control, if, if Hakeem Jeffries takes the house, they control all three branches. So, and I think some Republicans would join them. So I think mechanically it can happen. I'm not making the argument that it's likely to happen, but I think that mechanically it could. And they've already tried to remove him off the ballot when someone else was executing this, which was just a court called Sarah Wallace, which was relying on Congress, right? They relied on the J6 report, which also came from Congress. So, all right, Knox is here. Says, here's one, practice resource, practicesource.com, Free American Law Center, and how to combat free speech threats. Looks like a great link, Knox. Thank you for that one. B.H. Williams says, to Glocky's idea, that is way too wide ranging. Pick an area, go for it. Like, how about class action federal lawsuits against the court system in New York, demanding that all these trials post all filings for the public to see? Trials must be public and New York is holding star chambers. Pick one subject and shove the stake in that issue. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good approach, actually. You know, democracy docket, for example, you need someone like a Republican Mark Elias, right? That guy, I think, along with his other demented Democrats, they just sit around all day, 24-7 plotting. So you need a counterpart to that. 
and they only focus on election, right? Election democracy docket. They file election lawsuits all over the country and they're crushing. Elon has, you know, intimated that he's going to be building up some legal uh, operations, but the Republicans, like, where are the billionaires? Where are the Republican billionaires? They don't care. They hate Trump too. Hey, Sylvia knows any deep dive on Mercon's old cases. I saw a few that settled. He is Colombian, crazy to come here and break our legal system. Yeah, it's wild, right? And he's going to save democracy for us all. Patrick H. Been a member for two months. This is the most amazing online family on the tube. You're right about that, Patrick H. You're absolutely right about that. Shout out to our Watcher fam. We got a great, great people here, man. You guys are great. This is the most amazing family. Membo for two months, Patrick. We'll see you tomorrow on our members only stream in the morning. Same to you, Pritchy. Another two months, baby. Two months down as a Membo. We'll see you tomorrow, Pritchy, as well. Salty Sarge is over on the Rumbles. Says, fight the good fight, Rob. Hanging out with Robert's rulers watching the show in the rowdy end of the courthouse. I think they call it the holding tank. You're in the holding center? You're watching the show from prison, Salty? All right. Well, hopefully you're out soon. We got Tony Hay. Hey, hey, it's the Monkets bringing in five new members. Kelly K, Joshua G, Angela H, and Vino Veritas is here. And Eric L, all gifted members, courtesy of Tony Hay Monkets. Tony, thank you for that one. Very, very grateful for your support. And of course, I did not forget about the prayers from our friends, the Rubos. Let me scroll back up, make sure we get that one before we say hello to our friends on X. Here's a prayer from the Rubos. The Rubos are excellent prayers, uh, prayer gifters. From the Rubos, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything we pray for is now added unto us. We carry all the enemies of President Donald Trump and the enemies of a fair 2024 election to the highest court of the kingdom of God. We ask you, El Elyon, the only righteous and just judge to be the judge between President Donald J. Trump and his enemies and avenge the wrong that they have done to him and his hands shall not be upon them. We ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. From the Rubos. And the Rubos are awesome. They do good prayers. And we're grateful to have them over on the locals community. So cheers to the Rubos and amen to the prayers from the Rubos. Amen. Good stuff. And the Rubos, you know who the Rubos are. And they would never even think about mixing prayer and commercial activity. But I will. And you can go support them and get yourself some delicious salt at rubosaltshop.com. Amen to that. So it's delicious. It's from France, man. It's from the bottom of the ocean in France. Think of it like French tears. It's delicious salt. You'll love it. All right. So shout out to the Rubos. And my friends, thanks to everybody for sending in those amazing donos. Thank you for the tremendous support. We had a couple others come in. NY says that this answer was a slam dunk to the charge that Trump in the hush money case was election interference. And I won my argument among today amongst the libs. Agree for the sake of argument that Trump was election interfering. Federal laws say those ledger entries would not be required to be reported till March 2017, four months after the election. Therefore, he couldn't have interfered with the 2016 election. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the election's already over and he wouldn't have had to make the reports until later. Yeah. And a lot of other people make, you know, different business expenses, write them as different things like Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton had Michael Sussman and her lawyers shopping fake PP stories to the FBI and to the media. Michael Sussman acquitted in New York. Hillary Clinton to get charged with crimes for having, what was that? Uh, was it Latham and Watkins? No, it was a different organ. It was a different, what did he work for? Mark Elias and Michael Sussman. They were lawyers. Perkin, uh, Watkins, Perkins and Watkins, Perkins Coy. Perkins Coy, I think, is where they worked. Hillary was billing them. They were creating fake stories, fake election interfering stories, actually election. We covered the whole Sussman trial here. All fake. She didn't get indicted by anybody for legal expenses. What a joke. All right. So Cowboy Rob says, I think Trump is going to take advantage of being stuck in the trials for the month and do a whole lot of campaigning in downtown New York. Perkins Coy, that's it. Yeah. Perkins Coy. 
fake Sussman. The whole thing it was all campaign expenses. Nobody even she didn't get charged with anything. Rectified the whole thing with an FEC solution, you know. But Trump gets indicted for it, and they call that election interference when clearly it was not. And there was someone else. That was Hillary Clinton. I had another example in my head. I'll have to think about that later. All right, let's see who is joining us on X before we wrap it up. Go over to watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Say hello to our friends on X. And who is joining us over there in the house? Hey, it's working. Our video is working today. I wasn't sure why that wasn't working yesterday. We got a couple of comments in the house. What's up, Fred Petamonte? Hey, Don's in the house. Don says, thanks for everything you do, Rob. I watch you every day of the week, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Everyone check him out. Mega! Love it. Thank you, Don. It's great to have you here. Super, super awesome to have you. Fred says, waving their hands like a couple of Italians? Signed by Fred Salvatore Pedamonte. <laughs> so he gets it. He gets it. Fred's like, he's typing. Typing in, the, uh, in your comment. Good to see you, Fred. Salty Sarge. Those using their position and power to find fame and fortune by bringing to power forces they cannot control. And just like Robespierre, three years afterwards, he faced the same guillotine for accusing people he brought the power of corruption. Yeah, historic history has uh, you know some precedent where this stuff backfires bigly. Forgot My Name says, thanks for the great show. Thank you, Forgot My Name. TJ King says, thanks for mentioning the Kelly case. I've spent my whole life on the border on both sides. And his case should be followed by all Americans. I know if uh, if we had more time, we'd be able to dedicate to that case as well. But I agree, you know, it's a it's a travesty of uh, an American landowner who's being prosecuted by racists. To be honest, Raven Madness says very jarring. A dismissed juror. Yeah, I watched some of that clip, Raven. And Pamela says this is so sad. I feel like I can speak for most. We are ready to fight for our country. We know it will be hard after he's elected, but we're ready to have our nation back and put the necessary actions into place to protect our way of life. You're right about that, Pamela. You're right about that. We've got some work to do. We've got a journey that we're on together, but I you know, truly believe that America is not our government. America is not our federal government. It's hard to disambiguate the two, and our federal government has a lot of power over our lives, but it's going to be less and less by the year because they're incompetent. They have less agency. They have less capacity to do anything meaningful. And as they continue to fail, we'll become more free. I know it doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense right now, but I think it's true. And we're on that journey together. We're getting stronger every day. And these people are exposing themselves for who they are. The last thing we want is for them to continue to operate in the gutters where they are. And then all of us think that everything's hunky-dory. It's not. It's all a, a, a disgusting facade and we're getting to see it and we're going to continue to expose it here and we're grateful for your help as we do. So we're going over to watchingthewatchers.locals.com, my friends, for our members only after party. Come and say hello. We also have robertcovea.com. If you want to grab the PDF we reviewed there, if you want to get the show calendar, we have all the calendar events, case events, all the things there. We have our merch store. We have our newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter. Great way to share the show. We bundle up all of our content, send it in an email back over to you, and then that way you can forward it to everyone you've ever met in your entire life, and they'll be grateful that you did. WatcherLodge.com. Come check out our sovereignty and self-development community at WatcherLodge.com. We've got some fun stuff over there. I posted my uh, results from the range over the weekend in our news and stories segment. We've got things popping up in the home garden. Day five, you can see some stuff's popping up. Was at the range over the weekend. And so we'd love to see you come over there, say hello, sign up, join us for Sovereignty Saturdays every Saturday, 1030 Pacific over at WatcherLodge.com. And of course, my friends, before we wrap it up, we want to thank our meme smiths and our mods in the house who keep things nice and orderly for us, including K-Bean in the house, Just Cause. We got Playing Hooky, our friend Ronnie Cole, Zach Nichols, Janek, Dog Digger, Economy Pilot, and... Donut Mind Me and John McGarvey as well. And mega special shout outs to Donut for consolidating everything that I missed over these last few days and for giving us a little puppy extravaganza. Thank you for that, Donut. Hey, Meme Smiths, we got Jigum Geegum, Nathan N810, and Sleepy Dog Lee all in the house. But that, my friends, 
is it for us on the day. Day two of the trial tomorrow. We're not in trial, but we are going to be back here to unpack whatever is in store. Show at the regular time, and we need to see you right back here so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability and transparency down upon our system with the hope of finding justice. Make it a beautiful night, my friends. Sleep very well. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.